Hi there, and welcome back. I'm so glad you've joined me today for these readings, which are for Day 40 in the Digging Deeper Daily Reading Plan. They are Exodus 19 and 20, Job 40, and the first half of Luke 1. Yesterday we heard of God satisfying the thirst of the Israelites by commanding Moses to hit a rock. Israel defeated the Amalekites, and Jethro brought Moses' wife and sons to him and gave him good advice. Exodus 19 Exactly two months after the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. After breaking camp at Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of Mount Sinai. Then Moses climbed the mountain to appear before God. The Lord called to him from the mountain and said, Give these instructions to the family of Jacob. Announce it to the descendants of Israel. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. You know how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure from among all the peoples on the earth. For all the earth belongs to me, and you will be my kingdom of priests, my holy nation. This is the message you must give to the people of Israel. So Moses returned from the mountain and called together the elders of the people and told them everything the Lord had commanded him. And all the people responded together, We will do everything the Lord has commanded. So Moses brought the people's answer back to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will come to you in a thick cloud, Moses, so the people themselves can hear me when I speak to you. Then they will always trust you. Moses told the Lord what the people had said. Then the Lord told Moses, Go down and prepare the people for my arrival. Consecrate them today and tomorrow, and have them wash their clothing. Be sure they are ready on the third day, for on that day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai as all the people watch. Mark off a boundary all around the mountain. Warn the people, be careful, do not go up on the mountain or even touch its boundaries. Anyone who touches the mountain will certainly be put to death. No hand may touch the person or animal that crosses the boundary. Instead, stone them or shoot them with arrows. They must be put to death. However, when the ram's horn sounds a long blast, then the people may go up on the mountain. So Moses went down to the people. He consecrated them for worship, and they washed their clothes. He told them, Get ready for the third day, and until then, abstain from sexual intercourse. On the morning of the third day, thunder roared and lightning flashed, and a dense cloud came down on the mountain. There was a long, loud blast from a ram's horn, and all the people trembled. Moses led them out from the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. All of Mount Sinai was covered with smoke, because the Lord had descended on it in the form of fire. The smoke billowed into the sky like smoke from a brick kiln, and the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the ram's horn grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God thundered his reply. The Lord came down on the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain, so Moses climbed the mountain. Then the Lord told Moses, Go back down and warn the people not to break through the boundaries to see the Lord, or they will die. Even the priests who regularly come near to the Lord must purify themselves so that the Lord does not break out and destroy them. 
But Lord, Moses protested, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai. You already warned us. You told me, mark off a boundary all around the mountain to set it apart as holy. But the Lord said, Go down and bring Aaron back up with you. In the meantime, do not let the priests or the people break through to approach me, or I will break out and destroy them. So Moses went down to the people and told them what the Lord had said. Exodus 20 Then God gave the people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sin of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. I, the Lord, will not let you go unpunished if you misuse my name. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest, dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days I made the heavens and earth, the sea and everything in them. But on the seventh day I rested. That is why I, the Lord, blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Honor your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land that I, the Lord your God, am giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's house. You must not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. When the people heard the thunder and the loud blast of the ram's horn, and when they saw the flashes of lightning and the smoke billowing from the mountain, They stood at a distance, trembling with fear. They said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen, but don't let God speak directly to us, or we will die. Don't be afraid, Moses answered them, for God has come in this way to test you, and so that your fear of him will keep you from sinning. As the people stood in the distance, Moses approached the dark cloud where God was. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to the people of Israel, You saw for yourselves that I spoke to you from heaven. Remember, you must not make any idols of silver or gold to rival me. Build for me an altar made of earth and offer your sacrifices to me your burnt offerings and peace offerings, your sheep and goats and your cattle. Build my altar wherever I cause my name to be remembered, and I will come to you and bless you. If you use stones to build my altar, use only natural uncut stones. Do not shape the stones with a tool for that would make the altar unfit for holy use. And do not approach my altar by going up steps. 
if you do, someone might look up under your clothing and see your nakedness. Yesterday, God continued to challenge Job with questions too hard for humans to answer. Job 40 Then the Lord said to Job, Do you still want to argue with the Almighty? You are God's critic, but do you have the answers? Then Job replied to the Lord, I am nothing. How could I ever find the answers? I will cover my mouth with my hand. I have said too much already. I have nothing more to say. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind, Brace yourself like a man, because I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. Will you discredit my justice? and condemn me just to prove that you are right. Are you as strong as me? Can you thunder with a voice like mine? All right, put on your glory and splendor, your honor and majesty. Give vent to your anger. Let it overflow against the proud. Humiliate the proud with a glance. Walk on the wicked where they stand. Bury them in the dust. Imprison them in the world of the dead. Then even I would praise you, for your own strength would save you. Take a look at Behemoth, probably a hippopotamus, which I made just as I made you. It eats grass like an ox. See its powerful loins and the muscles of its belly. Its tail is as strong as cedar. The sinews of its thighs are knit together tightly. Its bones are tubes of bronze. Its limbs are bars of iron. It is a prime example of God's handiwork, and only its creator can threaten it. The mountains offer it their best food where all the wild animals play. It lies under the lotus plants, hidden by the reeds in the marsh. The lotus plants give it shade among the willows beside the stream. It is not disturbed by the raging river, not concerned when the swelling Jordan rushes around it. No one can catch it off guard or put a ring in its nose and lead it away. Yesterday we finished Second Peter with his advising us to get ready for the Lord's return. And now we turn to the Gospel of Luke. As we find out in other New Testament books, Luke was the physician who was a traveling companion of Paul. His goal was to write a well-researched and ordered account of Jesus' life, as he says in his formal prologue. Robert Maddox states, Luke writes to reassure the Christians of his day that their faith in Jesus was no aberration, but the authentic goal towards which God's ancient dealings with Israel were driving. Luke is the longest book of the New Testament, and if we put Luke's two books together, that is with Acts, they form 27% of the New Testament. Constable is right in this interesting observation. Muslims respect the Gospels, they call them Injil, and probably more Muslims have been brought to faith in Christ through Luke's Gospel than any other because of its emphases. Luke wrote to Theophilus, who may have been a Roman dignitary, But since the name means lover of God, Luke may have intended that his book be for all of us who love God. Luke's explanations show that he was writing to the Greeks, and so he appropriately brings out that Christ came for all mankind, Jews and Gentiles. Luke also highlights the roles played by women. A major example of this is the material from his interviews with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Luke includes more poetry than the other Gospels. 
tells more about Jesus praying and chronicles Jesus' parables and teaching. Our first time in Luke chapter 1. Many people have set out to write accounts about the events that have been fulfilled among us. They used eyewitness reports circulating among the early disciples. Having carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I also have decided to write a careful account for you, most honorable Theophilus, so you can be certain of the truth of everything you were taught. When Herod was king in Judea, there was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. He was a member of the priestly order of Abijah, and his wife Elizabeth was also from the priestly line of Aaron. Zechariah and Elizabeth were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all of the Lord's commandments and regulations. But they had no children because Elizabeth was unable to conceive and they were both very old. One day Zechariah was serving God in the temple, for his order was on duty that week. As was the custom of the priests, he was chosen by lot to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and burn incense. While the incense was being burned, a great crowd stood outside, praying. While Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth, and he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure this will happen? I am an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. Then the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born for my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah to come out of the sanctuary, wondering why he was taking so long. When he finally did come out, he couldn't speak to them. Then they realized from his gestures and his silence that he must have seen a vision in the sanctuary. When Zechariah's week of service in the temple was over, he returned home. Soon afterward, his wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. She exclaimed, How kind the Lord is! He has taken away my disgrace of having no children. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I'm a virgin. 
The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. And now let's pray together. Our glorious God, thank you for two beginnings that we see in your word today. First, we see the giving of the Ten Commandments, which reveal your character, your righteousness, your holiness, your justice and judgment to come. And then we see that you sent a Savior, Jesus, to be born of a virgin, who would come to save us because of our inability to keep those commandments. We see also the words that nothing is impossible for you. We thank you now for being with us for today and pray that we would live for the glory of Christ.